got here. I don't have time for this, but it should be fun. <laughs> this book is super weird. There's, there's no excuse. Are you excited for me to talk about something other than Abercrombie? I mean, we've said it's not gonna end, ever. Despite declaring many times that I intended to have smaller TBRs this year, every month, it gets worse. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how we got here. I mean, I do. It's just a lot of, a lot of <laughs> poor decisions. <laughs> Basically, I just said yes to a lot of things. And I kept thinking that April was a kind of low-key month. Um, and the entire reason for that was because the, the first law read-along that we're doing on the podcast we're taking a break in April. We're not reading anything in April. And we're going to come back to the standalones in May. And because one book was off my TBR, I was like, oh, okay, April's like a, a chill month. I can say yes to everything in April. Well, here we are. And actually, my TBR is worse than this because in addition to what you see before you, some of these books are for this, but um, I agreed to be a co-host um, for the tour.com-a-thon that is being hosted by Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Um, I will leave her announcement video link down below because she can explain it a lot better than me. What I can tell you is that it is taking place in April. It is a week long. The mission statement of it is to read Tor.com uh, imprint books. There is a bingo board. There will be a giveaway. There will be reading sprints. Um, there will be a live show. And we have a group book, a book that is like required reading for, well, the host anyway. So Tor.com, a lot of what they publish are novellas. And sort of the, again, the mission statement or like part two of the mission statement is like, it's one to read Tor.com books and two, because we probably all have a bunch of Tor.com books that are like languishing on our Kindles, or at least I do. So uh, the point being, I have a couple here at the top that I'll go over, Tor.com books, that I have physical copies of, um, but then I also do have a bunch of Tor.com books on my Kindle. So I'll go over those first before I forget, just to get through that first. So anyway, here's the TBR sack. We're gonna move it now, okay. okay. Well, let's start with the group book, the one that is like required or at least the one that we will be talking about in the live show. I don't know if we're talking about anything else in the live show. I'm a terrible co-host. Bethany knew this when she asked me though. So the group book, the like official book is Remote Control by Nettie Okorafor. Uh, I do have that on my Kindle. So no physical copy that I have, um, but just kidding. Scrap what I was gonna say. That is the group book. So I will be reading that. May as well go through the other ones that I don't have physical copies of since I've got my phone on me. There, I will. I also have on my Kindle Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nevo, Drowned Country by Emily Tesh, which is the sequel to Silver in the Wood. I might need to reread Silver in the Wood. It's been a while. They're both short, so if need be. Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps by Kai Ashanti Wilson and Inside Man by KJ Parker. So those are all on my Kindle. Those are all my on my uh, tour.comathon TBR. And then in addition, I have and will be attending or attempting to read Fly Away by Kathleen Jennings, uh, which I don't, I bought it when it came out. So I don't remember why I did. I just remember it sounding amazing to me. And also being shocked at how short it was when I got it. And a book that I've been meaning to read for since it came out. Uh, Ring Shout by Peter Jelly Clark. The ones that I'm regarding as like firmly this is happening are the group book Remote Control and then Ring Shout because I have been wanting to read this for forever. So having this opportunity to like force myself to is yay. And then this book, um, so the giveaway I mentioned, there are two books for that are uh, possible things for the giveaway. Um, I don't remember where the other one is. But one of the books is a book that I actually have and intend to read, and that is um, Elder Race by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Adrian Tchaikovsky is the author of Guns of the Dawn and Tiger and the Wolf and that alien spider one. Never read it, but I know other people have. Uh, anyway, so yeah, one of the giveaways is for Elder Race, and I will also be reading Elder Race, or intending to anyway. Tor.comathon, again, the announcement video is linked down below, um, Bethany's video, where She'll tell you all the co-hosts and um, the giveaway details, how to enter, and relevant dates. I think it's the 16th through the 22nd. Um, don't quote me on that. And yeah, uh, it should be it should be fun. Uh, this is I don't have time for this, but it should be fun. <laughs> okay, moving on to everything that is physically on my TBR, which yeah, you already saw. It's a lot. So even though I was like I. I have a freaker month in April because we are not doing a first law book in April. We do have book club in April because we're quarterly now. So those just like got swapped. So April was a written no freer than any other month, but whatever. So uh, we're reading A Lady's Guide to Mischief and Mayhem by Amanda Collins. This is Amanda's pick. So the live show for it will be on Amanda's channel the last Saturday of the month. However, we have been doing them on Saturday morning 
uh, Saturday morning our time, uh, or at least my time. Saturday, it has been 11 a.m. Pacific time every time, always, unless it's Halloween. But we do have some scheduling conflicts, so we will be doing it in the evening instead. Um, I think 6 p.m. Pacific time. But anyway, otherwise, uh, last Saturday of the month, as usual. We'll, we'll see how I do with this romance book. <laughs> The next two I'll do together. Mara and I are continuing our Realm of the Elderlings journey with uh, now diving into the Tawny Man trilogy. However, we were told during the live show where Mara and I talked about Farseer and Live Ship that it is wise to read The Willful Princess and the Five Old Prince before reading Tawny Man. So Mara, it's really short. So Mara and I are gonna read both this month. I'm delighted by how short this is. And I'm delighted that like comparatively speaking, Fool's uh, Errand, was that? correct? Did I take the right one? Yeah, book one. Okay. Whew. The titles are all very similar. <laughs> I mess them up all the time. Um, so yeah, uh, Fool's Errand compared to the live ship books or compared to Assassin's Quest is practically a novella. So looking forward to this. Everyone keeps hyping Tawny Man. Like I felt like everyone hyped live ship a lot, but then as soon as I was reading live ship, no one cared about live ship. Everyone was like, nah, Tawny Man is where it's at. I was like, I swear all y'all told me that live ship was where it's at. <laughs> So I'm just guessing that as soon as I start Tawny Man, everyone's gonna be like, Tawny Man's cool and all, but where it's really at is fits in the pool. <laughs> so anyway, I am stoked to continue my Realm of the Elderlings journey. The next three I will do together because I said yes to everything this month. I don't know why I schedule my life like this. We're back with Shakespeare, but not, are we, not only are we back with Shakespeare, we were doing just a play and the Hogarth retelling of it, which all things considered, aside from like committing to a live show for that, it's pretty short. Shakespeare plays are very short, and the retellings so far have been quite short. And that remains true. We are reading King Lear and the Hogarth uh, Shakespeare retelling of it, Dunbar by Edward St. Aubin. Um, and it is quite short. But we're not just doing that. Oh no. Oh no. We have been calling this for months now the Triple Lear, because we are also reading The Queens of Innes Lear by Tessa Grad, which is not short. Not short at all. So we're reading all three of these, we being me and my friend Heather, and we're going to have a live show chatting about the play, the retellings, comparing, contrasting, gushing, whatever. So if you are in any way inclined towards Shakespeare retellings of the Bard, consider joining us. Next up is the is a mini read along that we're doing in my discord um, that I mentioned last month. We read Angela's Ashes uh, last month in March kind of for St. Patrick's Day, but then we're but with the intent to go on and read Tis and then Teacher Man next month. So Tiz is up next in April. Um, I have read this before. I have not read Teacher Man, so that'll be new for me. Angela's Ashes was a reread and Tiz is a reread. And I remember not liking Tiz as much as Angela's Ashes, um, but I did really enjoy it. I mean, Frank McCourt's authorial voice, it's so charming that it's hard. I mean, well, at least I think so. So anyway, uh, I am looking forward to this reread. It's been a long time since I read Tiz. And yeah, and I'm very much looking forward to, for the first time reading Teacher Man next month. Then the Sword of Truth read-along continues with the one that every single live show so far, Bethany and I have brought up this book to be like, and then that one. <laughs> Temple of the Winds, which is the fourth book in the Sword of Truth and is the one that both Bethany and I have vivid memories of being wildly scarred by. Because this is the weirdest one of the ones I've read. I read like nine of them um, back when I was reading these books for the first time. I don't know why I kept reading after Temple of the Winds, because Temple of the Winds is, um, it's something. <laughs> it's something. I feel, I'm hoping that because I've, like, I remember it being so bonkers that I might have, like, hyped that up in my mind so much that when I reread it now, I'll be like, actually, you know, it's not that bad. Like, I remember it being way worse. It's actually fine. I'm hoping. Because, like, my memory of it is being just nonstop, what? <laughs> Uh, so the live show for this will be on my channel. Yay. Um, and yeah, Bethany and I will be discussing it. Probably at length, because this book is weird. <laughs> this book is super weird. Next up is a read-along that it was, you know, on temporary hiatus and is now returning to you. And that is the Sun Eater series by Christopher Rocchio, because Kingdoms of Death is out. And also, we've got the Lesser Devil story collection. So Alex and I read The Lesser Devil, which is a story in here. Um, but there's a whole bunch of other stories that are published in this bind up. So Alex and I are doing both and we're going to chat about them on his channel. Yes. Yes. Well, we weren't, it wasn't his channel before it is now. Uh, yeah. So Kingdoms of Death is the fourth book in the Sun Eater series and The Lesser Devil is, you know, 
short stories within the world of the Sun Eater, uh, including The Lesser Devil, which we did read before and we talked about it uh, when we talked about the third book. So you've had time now to catch up. I expect every one of you to be there for this because you've had months now to read Empire of Silence, The Howling Dark, and The Devil, uh, Demon in White. So there's, there's no excuse. You should all be there on Alex's channel when we talk about Kingdoms of Death. Next up is my Book of the Month Club book because, as I've said, I have, I'm requiring myself to read those as I get them so that I don't fall behind on them. And it's months like these where I'm like, but what if I didn't though? But if I think that once, then I will never get back to reading all of them. I am on the wagon on this right now and I cannot fall off the wagon. So anyway, the book that I picked in March, yes, because uh, it's April, was The Cartographers by Peng Shepard. At this point, I don't really remember. I just remember this was like one of the speculative options. It says it's perfect for fans of Joe Hill and B.E. Schwab, which I'm more or less a fan of theirs, not like obsessed. It seemed quite like magical realism-ish, a highly imaginative thriller about a young woman who discovers that a strange map in her deceased father's belongings holds an incredible, deadly secret, one that will lead her on an extraordinary adventure and to the truth about her family's dark history. It sounded intriguing at the very least, and I quite like this cover. So, I mean, other than the fact that I'm gonna be buried alive under my TBR. I'm quite looking forward to this. Uh, next up is the book that my patrons and I uh, are buddy reading. We buddy read Strange the Dreamer in March and with the understanding that in April we would continue on and read Muse of Nightmares, the second book in this duology. And I once again picked the shiniest copy of this that I have because I don't know why. I also hate purple. So I picked the shiny purple copy to show you because because I don't know why. This is, I think this is signed. I know a lot of my copies are signed. Yep, it surely is. <gasps> signed to me, my lady Taylor. Uh, even though it's purple. I'm pretty, yeah, I think at the time, uh, the date of her signing, not that you care. I had ordered the UK one, which is orange. Chef's kiss. But because it was coming from the UK and the signing was like a day after the book's release or something, so it had not arrived yet. So I couldn't bring my UK copy for her to sign, so had her sign and personalize the purple one to me because you know you do what you gotta do. Muse of Nightmares as I said is a sequel to Strange the Dreamer. I remember adoring this like I love Strange the Dreamer but Muse of Nightmares was five out of five stars whereas Strange the Dreamer because of very spoilery reasons it did disappoint me at the end which was I mean I love Strange the Dreamer still but it did something that I was quite angry about. And it took me a whole year, luckily I had a year be between the release of Strange of the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares to forgive Lainey Taylor for doing that so that I could go into Muse of Nightmares prepared to accept what more she had to tell me. And Muse of Nightmares is beautiful. It is five out of five stars. It's amazing. And I'm very much looking forward to rereading this. So next up is the book that my patrons chose for me to read and review for them or read and vlog for them. And that is The Justice of Kings by Richard Swan, which I feel like everybody was reading arcs of this like a month ago. I generally heard positive things. So I'm looking forward to this. And it's also not as long as I was afraid it would be because adult fantasy can be, you know, can be hob like. But yeah, this sounded when people were reviewing it like something I would like. So when my patrons picked it for me, I was not upset. So I obviously don't know anything about this other than it's a new fantasy book and it is a fantastic debut according to Peter McLean. And I really like Peter McLean's uh, War for the Rose Throne books. And Chaos Vioso also blurbed it. And I liked, I, I quite liked um, The Wolf of Oranyaro. Chaos Vioso said a marvelously detailed world with an engrossing adventure from a unique perspective. No man is above the law. So yeah, I'm excited to read this. This shouldn't be on my TBR this next book because I don't have time for it. Um, <laughs> But also, I'm gonna buddy read it with uh, Vish from Books with V. I think she's rereading it. And yes, but anyway, <laughs> that is Jade War by Fonda Lee because I cannot be kept away from the Greenbone saga. I mean, I told Mara if she was gonna read it in May, I could wait that long. And she was like, no, go ahead. I, I don't know when I'm gonna read it. And I was like, <laughs> okay. I'll probably read this first. I will probably read this as soon as I'm done filming videos today. <laughs> I'm super, super stoked. Chain City, so good. I mean, the year is young, but, and I have no idea how I'll feel about the next two books in the series, but Jade City could easily be a favorite of the year for me. And everyone says the second and third books are even better. So are you excited for me to talk about something other than Abercrombie? For me to fangirl about a different series? Cause like I can just replace all of the times when I bring up First Law with Greenbone from now on. That we can make that happen. <laughs> And last but most certainly not least is the final-ish book in our A Song of Ice and Fire read-along, which, I mean, we've said it's not gonna end ever, 
So this is, is this the end? I don't know. <laughs> but we're reading Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin, uh, Alex, Jimmy, and I. And the live show for this is back to my channel, I think. Yes. We were originally thinking and hoping that House of the Dragon, the HBO show, would be coming out around now. So it would be like cool to read this like right before the show comes out. Uh, so it's like fresh in our brains. Um, alas, the show was pushed back. So we're just going to forget everything that we read before the show comes out. <laughs> anyway, um, I've never read this. There, this is, this has gorgeous illustrations in it. Just looking at the number of like dark pages, like from you can, when you can see how many have illustrations on them because it's a dark page. Uh, there's a lot of illustrations in this book. I am really excited to read this. Cause like, I mean, I don't know where, when we're gonna get Winds of Winter. So it is just, it's a nice feeling to have a new George R. R. Martin, A Song of Ice and Fire related book to read. So yeah. I don't really know anything about this except like the like the fact of it being about Targaryens in a different era. But that's all I know. 300 years before A Game of Thrones, dragons ruled Westeros. Like that's literally all I know about this is basically that blurb. Um, and like, look at this baller ass dragon art on the back. Like, damn. So I'm excited. Um, I, I enjoyed Night of the Seven Kingdoms, but that was just sort of like a little, little story. So this is like, this is meatier. So I'm excited to talk about this for like five hours <laughs> with Jimmy and Alex. So yeah, that's everything that I'm reading in April. Is it enough? <laughs> well, let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings about what I will be reading, intending to read, hoping to read. Let me know which things like I should definitely prioritize, even though like it doesn't matter because basically everything that I just listed to you is something that I have to read uh, for one reason or another. So whatever you want to let me know. <laughs> I have those videos on Saturdays. Other random times will open up on Saturdays, so like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you.